Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first of all, may I ask you to turn off your mobile phone, as I already hear some good music. I uh, just would like to welcome this uh, exhibition. Uh, the people who made the exhibition, I don't need to give all their names. You have them in front of you, and I am going to introduce them one by one uh, as they come to, to speak. Uh, we are very pleased at the AUB Museum to host this exhibition, Archaeology for a Young Future. And I'm sure after you hear the speakers, you will know more about this exhibition. And after that, you will have a, a quick tour of the exhibition, which will last for a whole week for you to come back and visit it. Thank you for coming. And I would pass uh, the, uh, the speaker, what is Christina? Yes, Dr. Christina Menagazi from UNESCO. Please, Christina. Okay. Many thanks, Leila, Leila Badre, the director of this museum. Thank you for hosting this event. And thank you very much uh, to Giorgio Buccellati, Marilyn Buccellati, uh, who were really the person in charge of this um, uh, event, together with uh, Yasmin and uh, um, um, Anibal Saad, and all the participants. Uh, uh, as Leila said, um, we will uh, have them uh, speaking uh, later. Um, why UNESCO decided to uh, be involved in this uh, uh, event is especially because we believe uh, in the uh, strengths of uh, uh, the diversity. Uh, the diversity of people, the diversity of opinions, the diversity of uh, uh, people living together and uh, having a main purpose, uh, which in this case is a preservation of heritage. Um, UNESCO uh, decided to support this activity in the framework of a particular project, which is the Emergency Safeguarding of uh, Syrian Cultural Heritage, which is uh, uh, developed in partnership uh, and uh, financed by the European Union, and uh, which also uh, believe in, uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this common aim. Uh, with this exhibition and uh, the roundtable that will follow, we will see how it is possible to um, work together um, with, with, uh, as professionals, as um, heritage professionals, work together with uh, the same spirit, uh, together with the local communities that are really sharing the same uh, objectives. Uh, living in the same place and understanding that heritage is important for their development, is important for their also uh, daily life. So um, I, I think this is, is not a very big event, but it's a very big in sense of uh, the symbolic um, elements that brings with it. So, uh, and I'm very happy to see that many people are here. I know that there are a lot of Syrians also among the public, and I saw that this is important for all of them. So I don't want to speak more, and uh, I leave the floor to Giorgio, not to Marilyn, first of all, and uh, I hope you will enjoy this round table and the exhibition. But please, uh, if I can ask just to, uh, to thank all the persons that were involved, because this is a very great event and with a very symbolic uh, uh, message to convey. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Dr. Marilyn Bocellati from uh, Los Angeles, for you to know each one. 
Thank you. Thank you, Leila. And we want to thank everybody. Um, we feel very much at home here in Beirut because of the weather, because of this beautiful sea that you have, and because of all of the traffic. So we, um, I, I, my job is to, to show you a little bit why um, um, Tel Mozan, ancient Orkash, um, is important. Um, one of the reasons is that it's one of the first cities ever um, on the planet. Um, and it lasted from about 4,000 um, BC to 1300. And it is a Hurrian civilization, so it's not Sumerian, it's, it's not um, Babylonian, um, but it is a Hurrian civilization, um, which is centered there in the northeastern um, area of, um, of Syria. And, um, and this is the tell, it is very beautiful there um, with, uh, with the landscape that has a, um, uh, the Turkish mountains um, in the background, but with a great deal of agricultural land and the tell of Mozan. Now we've been excavating there for 25 years um, before the war. And so we have found a few things. Um, including a, a wonderful monumental stair, a stone staircase, um, which, um, which you see here, um, a palace, and which we have also um, preserved by putting these metal trellises covered with canvas. Um, and um, so this is the palace. The green area is the administrative quarter. Um, and the, um, the golden area is, you're beginning to see, um, is the representational quarter of the palace. And one of the most significant um, um, structures that we have found um, is this ancient, uh, what in Hurrian it's called an abbey. In, in the Hurrians were um, through this uh, structure and the magic circles that were inside the structure were calling forth the deities oh. of the netherworld. Now, in the south, in Mesopotamia, you never did this because it's very dangerous. Um, the deities could come and give you bad dreams, they could come and give you bad luck, um, but the Hurrians were not afraid, and so they, um, all of these um, rituals took place in, um, for calling forth the deities of the netherworld, took place in that abbey. We have some cuneiform tablets, not very many, um, but we have some cuneiform tablets written also in Hurrian because they were um, writing with a Hurrian script. Um, before we began the excavations, we, um, two uh, lions, bronze lions were found there. Um, and um, one is now in the Metropolitan Museum in New York and the other um, in Paris. We found um, some cylinder seals, um, and this is a ritual scene from the Akkadian period, about um, 2200 BC. Um, this is um, a, a seal of a daughter of Naram Sin. And when we found this, uh, we found it in pieces, and that's why you're only gonna see this drawing. Um, we were so thrilled. You know, archaeologists are usually pretty blasé about what they find. We were thrilled when we found this because it meant that Orcas was so important that a daughter of the Napoleon of the day, a daughter of Naram Sin, um, went to be the queen of Orcas. We also found some things that characterize the local landscape, the local environment. What simple people did, um, such as farming. Um, in the abbey, we found um, a few ritual objects, and this um, nude woman um, is one of them. Um, a lot of, of bronze um, objects, because of course we are near the copper sources um, in Turkey. Um, some shell inlays, um, silver rings, um, and the last one, that I'm gonna show you at least um, is this um, vase which um, has snakes and scorpions and relief on it. And that too was um, one of these rituals um, that uh, would um, help the priest to tell something about the future. And Giorgio is going to um, continue. <clears throat>
it's not usual in the world here to have the man speak after his wife, but never mind. <laughs> so Professor Giorgio Buccellati from Los Angeles as well. Ah, here we are. See, wives are better. Okay, the, uh, so the, my role in, is to bring you up to um, uh, the present day and uh, I will explain some of the, um, uh, the impact in effect that archaeology has had on the community. Um, as uh, Christina was saying earlier, this is not a big exhibit, but it's a great exhibit. It's great in content and in symbolic value. And the fact that uh, in Syria we have uh, uh, visitors like uh, the group you see here, or Dr. Suleiman, who uh, will speak later, who is, um, who is, um, uh, who was bringing these uh, students is really a, a testimony of this. In a way, I guess my real role is to explain the title. Archaeology for a Young Future. This is the first panel. And uh, I will not explain it now. I think it will speak for itself as we continue. Um, one signal of... Uh, the uh, spirit behind it are the words of uh, Adel Mahmoud, a poet, a Syrian poet, who uh, has written several poems about the exiles. Let's read it. I can only read it to you in English, but now that we are at the last foot of the Earth's boundaries, my companion asked me, crying, do you think we will ever come back? I said to her, let us cross now, but not as migrants do, rather like sparrows who do believe they will return. The goal of our work during the last six years of war has been to maintain the site alive, even the site that Marilyn has shown you, even though we have not been excavating. And to, as a comparison, not so much as a comparison, really, but it is an introduction. I'm coming for just a moment to the opposite end of the country, Malula. And we have Dr. Mahmoud with us, who will speak later, whose work in Malula is just as exemplary. His work had to come, unfortunately, after a great deal of destruction. And uh, in also, in, especially in the churches, you all know the significance, the great significance of Malula. And the great work of uh, Dr. Mahmoud has really been to bring back to life Malula. Uh, here, that's why this is sort of an introduction by way of contrast. We have been able to keep the site alive. Uh, so that from Urkesh, in a way, we go back to Mozan. Marilyn showed you how from the village of Mozan we have brought back Urkesh to life, but when we stopped the excavations, we kept Urkesh alive for the sake of Mozan. And the problem there was not the bombs, but the weather. Unless you do something about these structures, with the rain and the snow and the very hot uh, climate in the summer, the walls would simply melt away in about a year or two. So uh, we had started long before the war a um, commitment to preserve the site with this very simple uh, approach that Marilyn already showed you. This is the palace where each wall is covered with a very simple, and simplicity is really the hallmark of our approach. We are very, uh, keen on simplicity and, in a way, almost poverty of the approach, which is what made it possible for it to survive. You see, just this uh, trellis of metal with uh, a cover that can be opened so that you actually see the wall as it was when excavated. So the work came and we kept on in close contact with our people on the ground 
um, with this very poor, poor in quotes, is in Italian one uses the term arte povera, so the poor art of conservation, which was really our strength. This could be done because there was no great technology involved. It was really maintenance. The emphasis was all on maintenance and not on technology. The greatest technology we've been using has been the internet because we have been getting ph photographs and documentation. Uh, but you see, there is almost a certain sense of beauty in this uh, simplicity. This is the wall protected. And the site is in perfect shape, not only because of the weather, uh, protection against the weather, but also because of the commitment. This is just to remind you of how things were at one point, and the, with the ex maximum expansion of the so-called Islamic State. I put the date of this map from the New York Times, the 22nd of October, because on the same day, <laughs> as it happens, our people were protecting the big staircase that Marilyn showed you. And uh, these are the people, there's six, but one of them is taking the picture, so you only see five. Uh, the six people with whom we have been in touch and who have made it possible, really, to um, maintain this work. So there has been a synergy, as uh, Christina again was stressing before, this cooperation uh, has been um, a great deal, has brought to us a great deal of um, well, I couldn't say satisfaction, because how can you be satisfied during such a tragedy? But uh, it has verified, as well, validated our whole approach. You see, the second problem besides weather, apart from the bombs, against which we could never do anything, was really um, vandalism. And to prevent vandalism, not that we were meaning to prevent vandalism, but what, in effect, had that result was to educate the local people, beginning with our workmen. Every week we would give a lecture at the end of the season, we brought the children, and we developed a very extensive um, signage system that was, very, again, extremely simple, pages printed, so that to this day, they are there. The, we change them as they get deteriorated, and they're very, it's very easy to do. So there are the large synthetic panels that you just saw, and then these, which explain uh, more directly uh, the details of a certain feature. The um, point is that there is a great deal of information that remains and that is made it possible for the site to continue to be attractive for visitors. August 2015, September, a couple of months ago. And through Dr. Suleiman, who will speak to you in a moment, we also had a, we helped him set up an exhibit which um, attracted uh, people from Kamishli, the Kamishli area. Again, to see these are not the images one normally sees about Syria in the Western press. And, and yet it is, this is also Syria. It's a Syria alive and responsive to culture. This, it's also traveled. So from Kamishli, it went to Amuda. And uh, I love this picture because it's really so much in contrast with all the things we see about the destructions in museums by the so-called Islamic State. Here we have these young men and women setting up panels in Amuda. And to finish, one project that we had uh, started to plan in 2009 and 2010 was a park, an eco-archaeological park that would protect the landscape, which is still very pristine and beautiful around the site. And the only way to do it was to encourage local people to maintain their local traditions and to avoid excessive developments. So the idea was that each village would become like a hall in a museum. Here we have uh, ceramics around us. Well, there would be a village devoted to ceramics, which have, would have a modern potter and a display of ancient ceramics. Another one would be devoted to agriculture. Another one, another village, to animal husbandry, and so on. The uh, DGAM, the Director General of Antiquities and Museums, was, uh, took this up with great enthusiasm. And already in 2012, 2012, that is after we 
uh, could not go back, they sent a, um, a group of uh, members of the department to um, talk to the local people and explain uh, what this park was about. That there would be some limitations on what they could do, but that there would be a great advantage. And they would speak, they spoke to the children even, you see, even in school. They organized, of course, a, uh, a dinner party where women of the various villages, you can tell from their clothing, uh, took part. One of the requests we had made was that the government should, would uh, develop the infrastructure, running water, sewers, and garbage collection, and they started. This is running water in the village of Mozan, which was put in in 2012-13. And then the women uh, took on the task of uh, developing the folklore um, traditions. So these two rooms were donated, as it were, to the project by a local farmer. And so this is the portal of Urkesh. Again, extremely, let's say, poor in quotation marks. Very simple, but very powerful. This is one of the most beautiful museums, <laughs> halls you've ever seen. Something that they put up together. They asked for the pictures from us. They printed them. And in this room, there is kind of the soul of the community. And in the other room, there were two, as you saw, the women put on a uh, training sort of uh, atelier, we call it. Uh, on the board in the back, there are the names of the people. The women were supposed to go and do the work. They do jewelry, dolls. And this one has the logo, which was designed by Talal Mouala, uh, and um, with the name of the person. So it is really archaeology for a young future. What does it mean then? Well, it means that it is full of the vigor of youth. We really have, now, see, my task was also to thank, and I wanted to do it at the end, uh, to thank again from, from our point of view, Christina has already done it from the point of UNESCO, but from our point of view, we want to thank certainly UNESCO because it adds in immensely to the symbolic value of our effort. <coughs> to the AUB, uh, Leila in particular, for hosting us in, uh, giving us a window, as it were, through which to uh, exhibit this, to present our project. To the foundations that have, it's very difficult to get funding, as I'm sure you all well know, being friends of the uh, AUB Museum. It's especially difficult when you cannot excavate, you don't come up with anything important, you just preserve what's already there. And while in words everybody is for it, when it, it's a matter of actually getting money, it's very difficult. So we are particularly grateful to the foundations you have uh, on the seats. There were a couple of flyers for two of them, and in particular, Cariplo, which is one of the large, perhaps the largest uh, foundation in Italy at the moment. But especially, there are two things at the end. One is to the DGAM, and it is really a great um, collaboration that we have had. Marilyn and I like to say that we have been married for 51 years, pretty soon we'll have to change it to 52. And uh, the very first year we were married, we came to Damascus. So we have been, uh, for half a century now, uh, the hosts of, uh, I mean the guests, the guests of uh, the DGAM. And um, it has been almost like another wedding meaning that we have really always developed a, uh, the best that we could all offer uh, together. And always within the great simply, there haven't been enormous uh, projects tied with this. We have done normal excavations, but the spirit was always really incredibly young. And this is the second thing that, uh, that I want to uh, express to the young people who have been working with us. These are children, the group that went, I showed you before, to present the um, project was also a brother storyteller who spoke to the children about the past. And then this image that 
Dr. Suleiman took of, the, of a field school that went, not school in this case, just a visit to Mozan. And these young people, full of enthusiasm, are really a motor of enthusiasm for us. And then, just now, again, September, <clears throat> the Al Forat University with uh, uh, Mr. Rostam, who will speak, and Dr. Khaled, uh, organized a field school where they uh, trained the students in topography and in ceramics. So it was a two-day project. Again, to see, for us, you can imagine the emotion that we have, <clears throat> having been away from the site for six years and seeing it st uh, still now <clears throat> full of young people eager to continue the archaeology, not just for the sake of science, certainly that, they're professional, but also for the safe, sake of what it all means. And this is the last uh, image that I want to show you from Damascus in December of last year, a year ago. Some of the colleagues uh, denounced us for having gone to Damascus. We are very proud of the denunciations, in fact. We're very proud of having been there and of having celebrated this. And you see these young uh, men and women, well, women primarily here, with Yasmin on the left, who is the one who will finish our um, presentation today. So I really want with you to thank the young people. And you see why the title is, I think it's a way to make us feel young. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Vichelati. This is most interesting. And now I would like to welcome Dr. Mahmoud Hamoul, the new Director General of Antiquities and Museums in Damascus. And please welcome Dr. Mahmoud. And uh, I'd like, uh, first of all, to thank uh, all the organizers, professors, Madeline and Giorgio Bocilati and uh, Leila Bader, and uh, also Christina with her, uh, her staff. Thank you very much to uh, give me this opportunity to meet you here. Uh, actually, as you know, we, yeah, our cultural heritage uh, suffered and uh, continues to suffer uh, since 2011 uh, by this damage, by this destruction. Uh, we يعني, look, uh, someday we'll, inshallah, we'll finish this uh, يعني, crisis and uh, we are going to, to get the beast. We are on the way to, to get this aim. Uh, first of all, also, also I'd, uh, I, I should mention the uh, project of uh, Dr. Bocilati. It's, uh, يعني, I'm very proud of uh, this kind of a project. Uh, usually the archaeologist doesn't care in the community, in the lo local community. It's the first mission. We do, we, you know, we have more than 100 foreign missions in Syria where they were excavating everywhere in all, all Syria. Nobody care in the community. It's the first time and the first person who يعني, uh, interested in, in this community. So I, I told him uh, this morning, uh, you are harvesting now this uh, kind of relation with the community. They protect your uh, site. Uh, we need to do that with all the mission. You, you know, we have more than uh, 10,000 archaeological sites in Syria. Nobody, no, no يعني, any army can't uh, keep and uh, يعني, save and guard this uh, يعني, very considerable uh, heritage. So it's a very important uh, project and uh, we will uh, 
support. We are also yani, ready to support uh, your project to, to continue. I hope some very soon, inshallah, we will go back to your project, yani, field uh, site to continue your project over there to excavate and discover yani, the, the archive of this uh, yani, ancient capital or quiche. Um, our um, work, uh, you know, after um, yani day by day, our uh, the condition in Syria get better. Yani our uh, uh, the 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 area that uh, yani be liberated and uh, yani by our army, Syria Arab army, it's uh, day by day become bigger and uh, I think very soon this yani, next year will yani, Syria inshallah we hope that with, uh, the, with your love with uh, the support uh, your support with the support everybody in the war we will uh, yani, finish this war and we start to restore to reconstruct our uh, yani, country everywhere uh, our teams our uh, colleagues when they uh, yani, when we defeat the, the tourist group everywhere we very fast we go to the field to document uh, the damage the everything what happened even in the museum like uh, Balmira uh, to uh, also uh, yani put the plan what we uh, we should do uh, in Aleppo for example uh, here we I should uh, also mention the the yani, the help the support of uh, the uh, UNESCO uh, office in in Beirut especially uh, Christina, the, this uh, great person who went to the field everywhere. Sometimes it was yani, very dangerous and she went uh, didn't care <laughs> the danger. Thank you very much for her and for her staff also. Uh, Syria, I, yani, we also start our restoration everywhere. And for example, in, in Malula, we yani, uh, finished our restoration in the monastery of uh, Saint Takla and uh, Sergius, uh, the monastery of uh, Sergius and Bacchus and uh, other churches, and also in the ancient uh, uh, towns. Um, the situation now is good, and um, yani, yani my aim now to to uh, yani. Uh, develop the, our cooperation with all, everybody, all the uh, yani foreign country, all the uh, organization uh, everywhere to rebuild, restore, re reconstruct our heritage. Our heritage not just for the Syrian, our heritage for the human being. So uh, we need uh, yani all the efforts from yani, uh, everywhere. Uh, finally, I should yani, say this message for, for everybody also. Syria will yani, stay one country and the Syrian will stay one country. Nobody can divide us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Mahmoud. And I would like to tell you that we, the friends of the museum here, uh, are, have visited many, many sites in Syria, and we are looking forward to go back and visit the remaining sites. Inshallah. Thank you. <laughs> and now I call Mr. Uh, Rustam Abdul from Kamishli. بداية أشكر كل من ساهم في إعداد وتنفيذ هذا المشروع طبعا من المحزن والمؤسف جدا أن نسمع ونرى ما حدث ويحدث في سوريا من تخريب وتدمير ممنهج لمواقعها الأثرية والتراثية والدينية وذلك بسبب الحروب الدائرة على أرضها 
سوريا التي طالما احتلت عبر تاريخها مكانة متميزة في الشرق والعالم نظرا لغناها بالممتلكات الثقافية المتنوعة المادية منها والمعنوية نجد التراث فيها اليوم في حالة يرثى له وذلك بسبب تعقدات أو تعقيدات الأزمة واختلاف هوية المتنازعين وظهور جماعات متطرفة همجية لا تنتمي للإنسانية أو البشرية بأي شيء هذه الجماعات سعت بكافة الطرق إلى النيل من التراث السوري الذي كان عاملا أساسيا من عوامل هويتها الثقافية ورمزا لتواصلها الحضاري والإنساني وذاكرة حية لأفرادها ومصدرا للحوار وأداة للتفاهم المتبادل بين كافة مكوناتها ومن أجل الحفاظ على هذا الإرث التاريخي نسعى كسوريين معنيين في شمال وشمال شرق سوريا وبعيدا عن السياسات والتسميات إلى حماية هذا الإرث وذلك بشتى الوسائل الممكنة متجاهلين كافة الصعوبات والمخاطر التي ربما قد تعصف بنا بالختام أقول أن حماية التراث, التراث في سوريا هو واجب أخلاقي قبل أن يكون واجبا وطنيا أو مهنيا وأقول أن سلامة التراث الثقافي كما هي الآن في أوركيش تلموزان تعني سلامة للذاكرة الجماعية وكذلك تعني الاستمرار في بناء النسيج الاجتماعي وأيضا تعني تعزيز الشعور بالهوية الثقافية السورية وتحقيق المصالحة بين جميع أطيافها وشكرا شكرا سترجستون And now, Dr. Suleiman Elias from Kamishli. Faddab. Masa al-khair. Jazeel al-shukur li hudurikum al-tayyib. Wa shukran jazeelan li munadhamat al-UNESCO, Dr. Christina. Shukran li ba'that Urkish. Fil haqiqa, al-azma al-lati hasalat fi biladina kanat qasiya jiddan ليست فقط على البشر وإنما على الإرث الثقافي والتاريخي لبلادنا سوريا سوريا كما تعلمون جميعا هي أحد أهم الجغرافيات الموجودة على كوكبنا من الناحية الأثرية والإرث الثقافي بلاد الأبجدية الأولى وبداية البدايات يبدأ من بلادنا لذلك كانت مهمتنا صعبة جدا خاصة في منطقة الجزيرة لأن التلال الأثرية منتشرة في جميع بقاع جغرافية الجزيرة يعني عندما تصعد فوق تلة تنظر حواليك ترى أكثر من عشرة مواقع بالعين المجردة كلها قرى أطلال قرى وممالك مدن ومدن قديما لذلك كانت مهمتنا صعبة لكي نحافظ على هذا هذه المواقع بدأنا بالعمل على التوعية الأثرية يعني النقطة الأساسية كانت عندنا هي أن يعني نعمل على الوعي الثقافي الأثري عند المجتمع لكي لا يتعدى على المواقع الأثرية نتيجة في بداية الأزمة كانت الجماعات الإرهابية منتشرة على مساحة واسعة من الجزيرة لذلك عملنا على المواطن هذه المعارض اللي ذكرها بروفيسور بوتشلاتي اللي عملناها كانت هي بداية العمل على التوعية الأثرية على المواطنين لذلك بصراحة يعني أخذت صداها حطينا يعني عدد كبير من البوسترات في الشوارع في مدن الجزيرة مثل القامشلي الملكية رأس العين عمودة الحسكة حتى بالشوارع العامة حطينا بوسترات من أجل الوعي الأثري عند المواطن وعلى ما أظن يعني نجحنا في هذه المسألة نجحنا فيها من خلال الندوات 
الأثرية من خلال ورشات العمل اللي عملناها في جامعة الفرات طلاب قسم الآثار في جامعة الفرات وصورهم موجودين هون في المعرض طبعا هل الشيء هذا أعطى نتيجته في النهاية بصراحة أشكر كثير صديق سوريا العظيم عائلة كوتشلاتي اللي هو إحنا نسميه في الجزيرة أبو سكندر جورجيو أبو سكندر ومارلين أم سكندر وفي سكندر طبعا فريدريكو نشكركم جميعا وشكرا شكرا شكرا لكم جميعا شكرا دكتور سليمان and now I leave the word to Abuna Antranik Ayvazian from Kamishki thank you With your permission, my English is very bad. I prefer to speak or in French or in Italian. French, okay. I'm sorry, eh? With my French accent, mamma mia. No, my name is Bonsoir à tout le monde. Un grand merci tout d'abord à l'UNESCO, en la personne de sa directrice. Et en même temps, un grand merci aussi à la famille Buccellati, comme tout le monde l'a dit déjà, c'est une famille, désormais, on la considère une famille euh, syrienne, ou talmosienne, si on peut dire aussi. Tout le monde le connaît. Ils sont archi connus dans la région. Euh, moi, je voudrais parler, faire mettre un peu le point, surtout sur le côté positif de ces fouilles euh, archéologiques qui ont eu lieu pendant, bel et bien, 26 années, d'ailleurs. Ils ont commencé en 1985, ben, à cause un peu, vous savez, du conflit qui est encore continué en Syrie, ils ont dû quitter le, le travaux, les travaux sur place. Mais il fallait voir, de temps en temps, je faisais des visites euh, à Telmozan, il fallait voir le visage de ces ouvriers, des gens, certains d'eux, qui n'ont pas fréquenté l'école, qui n'ont aucune connaissance de l'histoire. Mais il fallait voir comment la joie, l'enthousiasme qui régnait, et c'était des ouvriers de tous bords, des Kurdes, des Arabes, des Arméniens, des Assyriens, des Chaldéens, bah, des Yézidis, il y avait de tous bords. C'est une petite nation zini en miniature qui était groupée autour de la famille Bucellati dans ces fouilles qui dataient déjà du troisième millénaire. Et quand ces messieurs-là, ces jeunes, faisait la trouvaille de n'importe quel objet. Il fallait voir comment, sans faire connaissance de ce qu'il faisait, la réaction de joie, d'applaudissement, d'embrassement les uns les autres, ça montre que le monde a de la place pour tout le monde. L'homme, dès le début, dès nos premiers parents, selon la Bible et les Écritures, que ce soit chrétienne ou musulmane, nos premiers parents ont aspiré à la divinisation. L'homme a toujours cherché d'être mieux. C'est pour cela, au début, on a humanisé les dieux pour diviniser les êtres humains. À Urkish, vous pouvez trouver une grande famille où le roi, la reine et les princes et le peuple, tout simple, faisaient une grande famille où régnait la joie régnait vraiment cette sérénité qui donne à l'homme un visage plus proche de Dieu et de l'idée de Dieu qui nous a créés pour être sur terre, pas pour faire la guerre, mais pour faire la paix et s'entraîner. Merci. Merci Abouna Antrani, you are a real Abouna. And now the word to Mr. Hannibal Saad from The Hague. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'll be short. Uh, I'll, play, I'll speak for one minute and play you some music. And you say, why music? Uh, because I do what we do um, uh, because we think that uh, our work is about local community, nothing else. Uh, local community is an asset. It's a um, uh, capital that could be an um, asset for peace now and when the real peace happens, when 
there is whatever they call it, uh, peaceful resolution and a cessation of war. Uh, the re that's why I work with Dr. Bushalati and UNESCO and uh, in this project about archaeology because we believe we have the same goal. Culture is a capital because it works with the community. It works from the bottom up when, and this is how uh, we work. We work with music, bringing musicians together and scholars around the world uh, to come together and think about ways, very creative ways, to work together with the international community in international setting to uh, uh, foster peace, the idea of peace, not a word, because the word peace is very PC. So that's why I thought I'd play you some music, see what we do. Uh, our initiative is very small, it started in 2013. I called about 20, 30 people in three cities, in The Hague, Beirut, and Amman, and I asked them, would you join, just to not to say anything about politics, just imagine Syria and peace, and imagine it that it's uh, uh, very, um, uh, has multiple religion and ethnicities and different areas and different background, and also has to do with the region around it. Syria is not disconnected from the region. So can you imagine it, would you join me without saying anything about politics? And there are 30 people joined. And then that grew to uh, five in 2014, seven in 2000 cities around the world in 2015, 16 there was 25, 17 we have about 35, including United States, Russia, Iran, um, many, uh, and uh, many other countries in Europe and Africa. And, uh, and then, uh, in Beirut, we kind of like, we do the joint forces where we do 10 days festival uh, to kind of uh, join all these uh, forces together around the world to foster this simple idea. Community is an asset and it's an it's idea to bring people together in an international setting. So I, I will uh, just want to thank a few people before I play two minutes video. I want to thank Dr. Leila Badr and the team for accepting us, and I'm humbled and honored to work with this great established people. Thank you, Christina, for supporting our project. We share with, uh, uh, with uh, UNESCO the idea that Syrian culture and Syrian music has to be alive, though in original form and also in a creative form. We work on both. We don't want to replace traditional music. It's very important. Another thing I want to say about Urkesh is very fascinating for me because I work with many musicians many musicians from the region, and you find Yazidi, um, uh, Assyrian, Syriac, Kurdish, Bedouin, Mardelli music, uh, Assyrian, Syriac, share the same melody. When we talk about music, we just forget about people, about the difference, and just say, okay, let's, I like that song, and I know what this melody comes from, and there is allusion to the region, but I found out it's the same thing in Iraq, in Aleppo, and other countries around us. I just play you two minute uh, uh, music, but first of all, I want to thank my work is I'm initiator, but I depend on many people. And in this case, I would like to thank um, uh, Ms. Elian Saade from uh, the communication office in the AUB, who supported us to come here in the first place, and that's why I came here and met. Uh, thank to Dr. Uh, Badr and her team, and we made uh, this project possible. I play you the video.
for beautiful music. And now I would like to end the session with a word from Ms. Yasmin Mahmoud from Damascus. Thank you, Dr. Leila. Um, I am here representing uh, not only the youngest member of the uh, Urkesh project, but also the youth of Syria. Um, it wasn't very difficult to think about what I wanted to say today. It all came to me when I saw my name um, next to Professor Bucellati's name on the catalog that you will see at the end. And it all made me think about my first day 10 years ago in Urkesh and how far along I came from since that day and how much this project not only helped me establish uh, a career for myself, but also es uh, establish uh, a future that I am proud of. Um, and this project has done so, uh, a, a lot of things like that for many uh, of the young generations in Syria. And I also have been very lucky to witness firsthand when we work with the young people um, in Syria on this project, um, we see how, how people from different backgrounds are all uniting behind a common purpose, which is to uh, save the land, to protect this land that holds our common past. So uh, this is, in a sense, the true meaning of archaeology. And um, we see it in Urkesh when we see these young people embracing the values that uh, the Urkesh project represents. And it's a very moving thing for all of us. Um, this exhibit is a true testimony of um, how uh, a project like ours is influencing the future of many young Syrians and also how uh, the young generation is influencing and playing a major role in our project and how the youth of Syria is um, helping in reviving this ancient city and helping in preserving it. And I, in my turn, would like to, uh, to say thank you to Dr. Leila and to AUB for their hospitality and to uh, Elian Saade for all the help. We, we appreciate it. And we thank you all for coming and we hope you enjoy this exhibit. Thank you very much. Now I think, um, Yasmin, you wanted to invite everybody to share refreshments, to uh, see the exhibition, go to the refreshments, and maybe ask questions as you are going around. OK? Yes, Professor Bocellati. Um, we will uh, bring out the catalogs now for all of you to have a look at. Yeah. Let's see. Which uh, have a, oh, okay, good. No, you you present it. I thought yeah. you you present it. Okay. This is the catalog for our exhibit, and um, this uh, is a slightly larger version than the exhibit itself, uh, and it has all the images that you will see in the exhibit. Uh, we hope you like it. We will have copies for everybody. So thank you very much.